today we are aboard a lovely Aprilia RS660 in the uh, full power version so it's the non learner approved motorcycle scheme uh, bike here in Australia meaning it has the full 100 horsepower uh, as Aprilia says in its spec sheet uh, the bike we have is currently on loan to us from Helena. Uh, we will drop her links in the description below about uh, her Instagram and stuff. So a massive thank you to Helena for letting me borrow her pride and joy to do this nice little review. Uh, we're going to do about 100 kilometers on the bike. Give us a brief uh, overview and feel of how we like this bike. The main comparison we're going to be making is obviously to the Yamaha R7, uh, especially within Australia, the R7 is the main competitor uh, when it comes to engine capacity and style. So we'll be talking namely between those two. And of course, we've done the review on the R7 before as well. The one big thing that I notice immediately with this RS is just how light it feels. Um, the R7 is only... Oh, hey, look at this guy. <laughs> uh, joining me in on the slalom. That's, how good is that? <laughs> um, yes, the one thing I noticed about the RS660 is even though it's only a couple of kilos lighter, uh, fully wet, than the R7, it immediately feels a lot lighter. Uh, that'll probably be down to some steering geometry and just the overall compactness of the bike. The general quality of the bike is pretty awesome. Paint is very lush, looks very deep, uh, and it should for the bike that it is. So here in Oz, in New South Wales, the RS660s go for just under $23,000 right away. Uh, that is significantly more expensive than the competition. So the main competition being, like I said, Yamaha's R7 for the full power full capacity HO version so that's basically what the rest of the world gets compared to here in Australia uh, the R7 is $15,000 right away the, for comparison you've got the full power SV650s $10,500 right away the Kawasaki Z650 or the Ninja 650 is about $12,000 right away and one of the other bikes closest to this in the bracket uh, when it comes to horsepower and the general overall design of the bikes is the Honda CBR650R and that is about 14, just under $14,000 right away uh, depending on sales and such like that. Uh, and all this of course is at time of filming which is the end of June 2023. So the RS does have a bit more of a premium uh, price of it over all the other bikes but one it's Italian and two it is very high spec. You've got beautiful fully adjustable forks, fully adjustable shock. Uh, they are set up a bit light for <laughs> my weight but I'm not your average bear. As we navigate this corner. Yeah so the suspension set up for a much lighter rider than me. Uh, that being said, it still handles exceptionally well. Oh, look at that, the feel of the bike. Just instant, instantly comfortable, instantly uh, inspiring to be able to go through the corners, confidence inspiring. Oh, road work on one of my favorite roads. Nice, how good is that? Yeah, the RS, I mean, just getting on it there then, you can see why in countries like America ooh, and the UK, the RS660, when it comes to racing, they're super popular uh, because they are basically a race bike out of the box. So they are very much ready to be turned into a race bike. Uh, and I mean, that's the Aprilia way. They make wonderful bikes, they design them to be highly performing. While this would be a good commuter bike and in a way it's set up to be a pretty decent commuter bike because the pillion seat can be removed and there's a plate there. That plate you can mount a top box to or a bag rack that sort of thing 
there's a plethora of racks and bag racks, panniers that you can actually mount just straight to the back of the bike. So while, yes, it's a sports bike, uh, and its main design brief is to be a performance bike, it can actually be pretty practical as well. So, so far we've been riding the bike in commute mode, uh, which has your traction control and your wheelie control settings up a bit higher. Uh, it means that your throttle response is a bit dozier. Just so that you don't have any untoward uh, throttle response. If you want to be lazy on the throttle, you don't have to worry so much about whiskey throttle. Yeah, it does have the same peak horsepower in commute mode. It just takes a little bit longer through the rev range for you to open up and get to that full power. We'll put it back on a dynamic and see how that feels. Ah, uh, yeah, you can feel on dynamic mode, it is far more punchy. Wants to rev a lot harder. This bike is fully stock, has a stock air filter in it, has a stock uh, air box, it has the stock exhaust. So there's still obviously plenty more gains to be made with that. Oh, it just rails around that corner, lovely. Look at that. Oh look, it turns the line so nicely. What a lovely, lovely motorbike. Must be said for the suspension that's got the stock settings in it for a much lighter rider. It's actually handling these bumps. Like the roads here in New South Wales have gotten pretty crook uh, in the last 12 months with all the rain that we've been having. Uh, and like I said, I am probably 40 odd kilos or 80 odd pounds heavier than the standard setup should allow. Uh, it's actually handling it really well. I'm actually very, very surprised by that. Uh, the R7, it was a bit choppier. Uh, again though, this bike is 22 grand right away versus 15, so there's obviously going to be a difference in componentry there. The R7 is fully adjustable as well. However, the RS just seems to handle these bumps a lot better. Like some bumps like that one on the bridge, like even my personal bikes with tuned suspension don't like that one. And this one actually handled it with a bit of a flop, so I'll done to a failure. As I said, it's a 10 degree morning and the bodywork on the RS does seem to work pretty well. Like I'm not overly cold, I'm not copping too much wind. I'm getting maybe a little bit right up into my helmet. Um, but you could probably cure that with a taller screen. I know that there are much taller windscreen options available for this little Aprilia. Uh, you can actually see a lot of them being used on say the Moto America bikes or the RSs when they're at the TT. Uh, Helena's bike doesn't have any stomp grips or tank grips on the tank, uh, which is my preference on any bike that I have. Uh, that being said, with the tank the way it is, uh, it does allow you to lock in pretty well. Um, so I'm not missing them a huge amount. Dynamic mode is certainly far more spicy. <laughs> oh, that's quite fun. Now, compared to the R7, or say the SV650, or even the Z650, Ninja650, the RS makes a little bit less torque at significantly higher up in the rev range by a couple of thousand RPM. So, I thought that was going to lead it to not getting off corners or stops like that one as quick or as punchy, but the engine is so uh, fast revving in comparison to those other bikes that you don't really have to worry about it. You sit there, you come off the clutch and it's already at the two or 3,000 RPM, you open it up and it really revs hard up into where it makes its peak torque. Uh, and where it's making its peak torque, it's starting to make a lot more power. Now, apart from being the lightest in class, Aprilia also has the advantage of being significantly more powerful than any of the other twins. Even the 
R7, which actually has a larger capacity. Uh, and it even has more power than the four-cylinder CBR 650R. On paper, it says, uh, Aprilia says this bike has 100 horsepower to its 186 kilos wet. That is the best part of 30 horsepower more on paper compared to the Yamaha, compared to the Suzuki, compared to the Kawasaki, which is really impressive. Not only is it lighter, it makes a bunch more horsepower. So with that lightness and with how quick the engine revs, that deficit that I was anticipating feeling when it comes to the torque, or maybe lack thereof, uh, is pretty much nullified on the road. You just have to be willing to open it up. The braking setup on this bike is quite good. You've got a Brembo master cylinder, very high spec with Brembo discs and calipers, 320mm discs, so very high performing. It is ABS connected, which does take away a little bit of the feel, unfortunately, but those are the rules and regulations we have to live in. So, as we're coming into this slower speed zone, I'm going to do an uh, emergency brake because I'm behind me, so... Alright, you saw me there. Just practiced an emergency brake, and I did indeed manage to feel the front ABS kicking in. Now, that's pretty understandable given how cold it is. Uh, the front tyre and the tarmac aren't going to be having a lot of happy conversations at the moment, so it's not unusual. Uh, I did ham fist the hell out of it too, so it was a proper emergency brake trial. Stopped me good and quick. Yeah, the full-on electronics kicked in, which you do want. Uh, they are called rider aids because in this day and age the quality of these electronics is so high that it is an aid rather than just an emergency safety however it makes it an even better emergency safety if it was pouring rain right now you'd certainly want to put it back into commute to make sure that the engine wasn't overly spicy uh, when wicking the throttle up and you definitely want to have traction control on and have your ABS functioning Nice day to be up in the air, that's for sure. Cold though. Uh, the one thing, I've, I've only done a handful of kilometres on the bike now. Uh, however, the, just how easy the bike is to ride. I know there is the old saying how everything falls so easily to hand. Um, the old cliche. But, I mean, it's true. It's just a very well designed bike. The ergonomics are perfect. Even for someone my size, everything is just easy to deal with, easy to go through the maps, everything super easy to go through. Even for someone as technologically illiterate as I am. <laughs> uh, the big comparison on the road is obviously going to be to the R7, which I've done a lot of riding on, and we've done the previous review on. This bike is far more nimble. It does like to steer a lot quicker. Uh, will that open it up to instability? Probably, uh, but it seems to, with the quality suspension and you know chassis design, it does seem to just handle everything thrown at it a lot nicer. The biggest comparison will be, everyone will say, ah, oh, how does it compare to your SV650 Super Twin? Uh, the handling is better. Just even as a road bike, the handling is better. Get a bit of focus on as we go through here. Ah, wonderful, how good is this thing? Now it is quite cold. Even the tyres are a bit cold after this little bit of riding. This road is pretty bumpy. Despite it being available as a loaner bike, 
this thing is a proper hot to trot sports bike for both learners and for experienced riders or riders coming back. This is the perfect top tier high level performance bike when it comes to the mid, uh, the mid capacity stakes. Obviously your, any of your 600s, your four cylinder or three cylinder bikes, uh, gonna absolutely trounce this thing. They have more power and more torque. Advantage that the RS has, it is one, cheaper, two, it's a lot lighter and meaning it'll out handle those bikes. It's not as super performance oriented in its rider triangle, which I have spoken about previously, meaning you're not going to get as fatigued riding the thing and the performance is far more accessible compared to those sports bikes. Like an R6 on the road, you've got to rev the thing to get it to go anywhere. Uh, even the Triumph 765s, uh, while they have a lot of torque, they still kind of fall into the category of a, you know, a sporty multi-cylinder where that torque is much higher up in the rev range. The power is certainly much higher up in the rev range. This little twin spins up nice and quickly and is super smooth, super lightweight. is now where we're starting to find the limitations of that suspension. And the tyres, we're finding the limit of the tyres there, it's a bit sketchy. being said, when you start getting to the speed limit on a big bumpy road like this, again their bike is very well composed, it's not trying to buck you or kick you out of the seat too hard, getting absolutely zero negative feedback through the fork, it's not trying to head shake itself to pieces, it's very nice indeed. For an off-the-shelf sub-700 twin, you cannot buy better than this. The R7 is a great base bike, but to match this, you're going to have to be throwing suspension at it. And at a minimum, you know, as we've proven in our other videos, your exhaust, filter, everything like that, are still going to get you nowhere near the performance of this motorcycle. Now, even if in base trim, these bikes only make 90 horsepower compared to the 100 horsepower that Aprilia says it makes. You know, you are still 20 horsepower more than the other bikes. And the chassis is better, the chassis geometry is better, the chassis handles better, it doesn't seem to flex or feel as ambiguous as some of the other bikes in class. Now the only bike, other bike in class that I haven't ridden is the CBR650R. Now I know it's not a twin, but it is you know, similarly priced and on paper has the same power as this bike. Although it is a good 20 odd plus kilos heavier and isn't a twin. And we will hold that against it. So the suspension, I keep going back to it, it's not set up for someone like me, but at the lower end of the speed spectrum, like perfect. I wouldn't really ask for much more. That's funny having been on the bike for this long now. It's uh, it's almost goading you into going a lot faster. You can tell the bike is certainly, while it's capable of being a commuter and going slow, it definitely wants to go a lot quicker, it's definitely capable of going far faster. 
but that's why they make such a good race bike you know for for anyone turning one of these into a truck bike you're spending your you know 18 to twenty two thousand dollars depending on whether you have to buy uh, insurances or whether you have to pay for stamp duties and such yeah when you look at the Yamaha 7 that's 15 uh, 13 to 15 thousand for the same thing the RS is certainly the better base model bike to turn into a track bike because with the simple addition of the Gabbro Racing up map an air filter and an exhaust you'll have actually opened the bike up to closer to that full 100 horsepower on the Dyna Jet Dynos that I've seen uh, and you'll make the thing even lighter when you take all of the road going ancillary stuff off you're getting a bike that when fully fueled is getting close to 170 odd kilos yes to try to get anywhere near 100 horsepower like the stock performance of this bike out of an R7 your standard exhaust you're gonna have to do but you're gonna have to throw a horde power on there you're gonna have to bore out the throttle bodies uh, and you are actually gonna have to put some cams into it at the bare minimum the stock pistons and rods are capable of getting the bike to 85 to 90 odd horsepower you'll have a bike that has more torque than the RS but less power but that's that swings in roundabouts uh, but the R7 is gonna be a bit heavier you're gonna have to start chopping subframes, putting other bits and pieces on lighter weight bolts uh, to get anywhere near, you know, the base level performance of this bike. And that's before you have to put a suspension in. Now, you, the aftermarket has certainly taken care of fork internals and aftermarket shocks for both the R7 and the RS. But if you don't want to spend a whole lot of money and time on engineering solutions or paying people to engineer solutions to get you to closer to that 100 horsepower from the 95 to 100 horsepower that the Aprilia has you're better off to just purchase an Aprilia uh, put some simple things like an air filter, Gabbro's up map the full system exhaust, whatever flavour you desire your race fairings, rear sets, suspension and you're good to go, you've, you've got a super twin yeah, it's very, very capable. If you're a diehard Suzuki rider like me, or a diehard for the Japanese brands like the Kawasaki, or the R7, you're going to have to do a lot of work to get them up to the base level performance that the RS has. Now, is it possible to do so? Yes, made in America, the UK, it's all proven that. But you've got to put a lot of time and effort into the bikes, and you know, it depends what you want to do. If you Yes, thank you dear viewer for watching this review of the Aprilia RS660. Thank you all for watching as always. Now once again a massive shout out to the sponsor of this video, Fisher Constructions. Very much appreciated for them supporting the channel and supporting our on track and road endeavours. So thank you very much. So if you like this kind of content, Please consider liking and subscribing to the channel and if you've got any comments or queries, things that you want to know about the bike or our experience with this bike or any particular bike that you want to see us do a ride review of, please drop a comment in the comment section below. We would greatly appreciate that and it helps us understand what we need to do to move forward. So, thank you very much. While it does have a lot of ground clearance, you can still get your toes on the floor if you slalom hard enough. <laughs>